Hashem kiven ola, nagila, nagila. A captivating event has unfolded in the ancient city of Jerusalem, where history and faith intertwine. The Feast of Tabernacles just concluded in Israel, but what is happening next is beyond belief. They have started building the Third Temple, entwined with a prophetic event that could reshape the world. Will this usher in the Messiah's return? What does this mean for the world's future? And how does it align with ancient prophecies? In this video, we will explore these questions and the profound impact of these events. Israel celebrated the festival of Sukkot, also known as the Feast of Tabernacles. This time-honored Hebrew tradition carries profound significance in the hearts of the Israelites. This year, however, the sacred festival bore a twist that stirred the hearts and minds of many, a reenactment of the water libation ceremony. This ritual hints at the construction of the enigmatic Third Temple. The concept of the Third Temple holds immense significance in religious beliefs, particularly within Judaism and specific Christian traditions. The Third Temple, rooted in Jewish tradition, is prophesied to reconstruct the Holy Temple in Jerusalem, following the First and Second Temples. Central to this prophecy is the belief that the construction of the Third Temple will signal the return of the Messiah. The Messiah's arrival is expected to usher in a period of prolonged peace, redemption, and spiritual renewal. With the Third Temple serving as the spiritual epicenter where humanity can connect with the divine. The anticipation surrounding the construction of the Third Temple is fervent, particularly within the Orthodox Jewish communities. It symbolizes the ultimate realization of their faith and the fulfillment of divine promises. The yearning for the Messiah's return and the establishment of the Third Temple is a driving force in the lives of many believers. It signifies the culmination of their spiritual journey and embodies their deepest convictions. For these individuals, the Third Temple represents not just a physical structure, but a symbol of hope and divine intervention. Hence, the recent celebration of the Festival of Sukkot brings the people a step closer to their long-standing desires. But what role does the Festival of Sukkot play in the building of the Third Temple, and why is it so significant? The Festival of Sukkot, also known as Sukkot and the Festival of Tents and Booths, finds its roots in the annals of history. It is a seven-day autumn festival that is a profound reminder of the Israelites' difficult 40-year journey through the unforgiving desert. Among the three most vital pilgrimage feasts, all Jewish men must assemble before the Divine Presence in a place chosen by the Lord Himself. Yet this festival transcends mere celebration. It is naturally linked to pivotal temple events throughout history. In the pages of 1 Kings 8, verse 2, we find King Solomon dedicated a second temple to the Almighty a moment of profound significance in the annals of faith. In the book of Ezra, chapter 3, this sacred festival also marked the celebration of the restoration of the temple, led by the valiant Zerubbabel, son of Shail Til. To truly appreciate the magnitude of this event and its implications, we must go into the depths of history, prophecy, and faith. The central question now that hangs in the air is whether the construction of the Third Temple signals that the world's end is nearer than we ever imagined. Does it suggest that we might bear witness to the arrival of the Messiah in our generation? As we stand at the cliff of the Third Temple's construction, it should come as no surprise that the festival of Sukkot was chosen to celebrate this momentous event, intertwined with the reenactment of the water libation ceremony. But what precisely is the water libation ceremony? Known as Nishamaya in Hebrew, it once held a place of profound importance during the Feast of Tabernacles celebrations. While it may no longer grace our modern rituals, it was a cherished and joyous part 
of the Feast of Tabernacles ceremony during the Second Temple period. This joyous event was renowned for the water drawing, a practice that unfolded during the hushed hours of the night, culminating from the pouring of water from the Siloam Spring for the water libation the following morning. The priest ascended a ramp to a bronze altar in the hollowed temple court for seven consecutive days. There, with a sense of reverence and jubilation, he poured a jug of water into the basin, allowing it to cascade gracefully into the altar. The profound joy experienced in this ritual is fixed in the words of the Mishnah. He who has never observed the enjoyment of the water-drawing ritual has never tasted joy in his life. Now, let's go deeper into the significance of the water libation ceremony, for it is a critical piece of the puzzle. The water used in this sacred site was drawn from the pristine spring of Gion, nestled just east of Jerusalem. This spring is intimately connected with the anointing of David's son, King Solomon, as described in 1 Kings 1, verse 45. In history records, King Hezekiah redirected the life-giving waters from this spring into the heart of Jerusalem itself, neatly engineering their passage through Hezekiah's tunnel via an underground conduit. These waters found their way into a cherished pool, the Pool of Siloam, within the protective embrace of Jerusalem's ancient walls. The significance of these waters transcends mere ritual, as they played an important role in the Red Heifer Ordinance, a sacred purification ritual detailed in Numbers 19. The sacred waters combined with the ashes of the Red Heifer were the agents of purity used to cleanse those who became ritually impure by sprinkling them. Now let us contemplate the weight of this moment in the hearts of many. To numerous faithful individuals, the construction of the Third Temple represents a prophetic event of profound proportions. It is seen as a beacon that will beckon God's divine presence back to earth, rekindling and strengthening the connection between humanity and the divine. The belief is that this sacred building will become a haven where people of all nations can gather to worship the Almighty. Yet a stark contrast emerges within this shade of faith and anticipation. The Book of Thessalonians reveals a different narrative in which the Antichrist emerges as a harbinger of deception and upheaval. The prophecy suggests that this figure will initially masquerade as a peacemaker, only to reveal his true intentions later. He will demand the worship of all people from every corner of the earth, within the very temple built for the worship of God. This ominous figure will use the third temple as a stage to elevate himself to the status of a deity, seeking to undermine the authority of Yahweh. What about the water libation ceremony and how was it reenacted? The ceremony was convened under the watchful eyes of distinguished rabbis, including Rabbi Israel Ariel, the founder of the Temple Institute. It was not merely a reenactment, but a rekindling of history and faith. Imagine a procession carrying a golden vessel filled with water, beginning its ascent to the mountain summit. It encounters a model altar adorned with willow branches, mirroring the ancient customs observed in the destroyed temple. With a sense of profound reverence, two Kohanim ascend the stone altar within the temple's inner courtyard. They carefully place two silver cups in the southwest corner, ready to fulfill their sacred duty. One Kohen pours water from the silver flask, while the other gracefully pours wine from the second cup. These precious liquids find their purpose, flowing gracefully into specially designed holes in the altar, a living tribute to a ritual steeped in history and faith. The ceremony culminates in a priestly blessing, the echoes reverberating through the hearts of those present. But this profound experience does not conclude here. The once in every seven years Hekel ceremony follows a moment of spiritual renewal and reflection that ties into the very fabric of faith. Pouring the water was a prayer for rain in the coming year, signifying the people's dependence on God for sustenance 
and their deep-rooted agricultural traditions. As we stand at this crossroads of history and faith, it's essential to acknowledge that while the water libation ceremony may not be an essential practice today, it remains embedded within the rich collage of Moses oral tradition. Sukkot is a festival that exudes happiness and spiritual connection, and the water libation is an integral part of this joyous celebration. This sacred ritual once lasted an astonishing 15 hours within the temple, with celebrations continuing throughout the night until the temple service resumed the following morning. Intriguingly, this was a festival that drew nations from across the world, transforming Sukkot into an international day of worship. Do you know that the water used for the water libation ceremony is drawn from the Siloam Pool? The Siloam Pool is a significant biblical reference, was the starting point for pilgrims journeying to Jerusalem for the biblical feasts. It was here within the confines of the old city walls in the southeast that pilgrims would cleanse themselves ritually before proceeding to the inner court of the Temple Mount to present their sacrificial offerings. The Siloam Pool, a vital water source in ancient Jerusalem, was used for this ceremony during the Feast of Tabernacles. Water drawn from the Siloam Pool symbolized the Israelites' reliance on God for water and agricultural blessings. Priests would carry this water to the temple where it was poured on the altar as a plea for God's provision, especially rain. The waters that filled the pool originated from the Gihon Springs. Their journey orchestrated through the Shalom Tunnel, often referred to as Hezekiah's Tunnel, a testament to human ingenuity and devotion. This pool, historically known as the Lower Pool, was constructed during the reign of King Hezekiah. It replaced an older tunnel, the Upper Pool, which had been vulnerable to intruders and attackers, a symbolic act of safety and sanctity of faith. Where does the Babylonian Talmud stand in all these ceremonies? The ceremony marks the conclusion of the sabbatical year known as Shemitah. This momentous occasion coincided with the arrival of Rosh Hashanah. According to the Babylonian Talmud, Shemitah is believed to be the most suitable time for the Messiah to reveal himself. This prophecy finds resonance in Amos chapter 9, verse 11, which proclaims, On that day I will raise up the fallen booth, Sukkot of David. The verse openly states that the Messiah will appear in the first year following Shemitah. It paints a vivid picture of complex events that must unfold before his arrival. The Talmud further elaborates on these events sharing insights into the days preceding the Messiah's coming. It invokes a sense of anticipation, promising the prophecy will be fulfilled. However, it's vital to understand that the Babylonian Talmud is not the Bible itself. Instead, it represents the collective teachings and opinions of numerous revered rabbis, akin to the compilation of the Quran. Each rabbi contributed their unique perspective often offering distinct prophecies they believed must precede the Messiah's arrival. Intriguingly, while many look to the Talmud and its teachings as signs of imminent events, there exists a stark contrast in belief systems. The Jewish faith holds that Jesus Christ is not the true Messiah, neither the one who came nor will return. They await the arrival of the genuine Messiah and world events serve as portents of his imminent arrival. The construction of the Third Temple is a testament to this profound anticipation. As we navigate these complex shades of prophecy, history, and faith, it becomes evident that these actions, including the construction of the Third Temple, the celebration of the Feast of Tabernacles, and the reenactment of the water libation ceremony, are integral to the fulfillment of biblical prophecies. And so, as the Third Temple takes shape on the horizon of history, and as believers and seekers of truth gather to ponder its significance, let us reflect on the age-old question, do you believe in what the Jews are doing, or do you hold other opinions regarding the preparations for the Third Temple? Your voice, your perspective, is an essential part of this multi-faced narrative. We invite you to share your thoughts in the comments below to engage in dialogue and to illustrate this ever-evolving tapestry of faith. 
In conclusion, the construction of the Third Temple and the revival of the water libation ceremony hold deep significance in history and faith. These events are at the heart of tangled beliefs. Thank you for joining us in exploring this complex narrative. See you next time.